Thanks for checking out this movie review let, which is what I'm calling these things, where I pull DVDs from and, and or Blu-rays from my collection, my stacks over here, which you can't see. There are two more further off screen. Um, I pull out three random ones, totally random. I literally close my eyes and just kind of move my hand and then pick, pick one. I do three of them, and then I let you know what those are. You vote on them. So the one for this one, for the first re um, review let, because uh, yet it's like review and roulette. Yeah. It's Demonic Toys, as voted on by you viewers. Um, the other options were This is Spinal Tap and what was the other one? Kick Ass was the other one. So you guys went Demonic Toys, so that tells me a lot about my viewers. Um, horror related and love crappy movies. <laughs> this is actually, this is in my collection, but it's actually the first time I've watched it. There are a bunch of movies in there like that, to be honest. So we might come across some more. At the very end of this review, I'm going to go in depth on this film, but at the very end is when I will re review, or I'm sorry, reveal the three new ones that you have to vote on. So all you have to do is put a comment down there and say the name of the movie that you would like me to do next. I'll tally up the votes, and the next video that I put out will be that one. So let's talk about Demonic Toys. Um, this is a 1992 release, so it's from some time ago. Uh, as people, as I'm sure people know, if you're watching this and you've seen Demonic Toys, you know it's a Full Moon Entertainment film, Charles Band's company. So it's not going to be like a good film. It's going to be a film, and it's going to have bad acting, but it's going to have fun creatures, uh, and the script is going to be not coherent, not really making sense yeah so uh this was a straight to video release which actually a lot of full moon releases are straight to video uh full Mo moon if people don't know best known for like the puppet master series but also known for these demonic toy films they also did like a puppet master versus demonic toy demonic toys and after seeing this i kind of really want to see that uh they also did like ginger dead man uh doll man uh, evil bong you know stuff like that so um one of the very interesting things I found out about this film when I was doing my research, which, by the way, if I sound stuffy, sorry, it's like rainy outside and it gets my sinuses and allergies going, so sorry about that. But anyway, one of the crazy things I found out doing my research before I watched this was the writer of the script for Demonic Toys was David Goyer. Now listen to some of the scripts that he's written since Demonic Toys, okay? He wrote Blade, Blade 2, and Blade 3, all the scripts for that, okay? Way, way loftier uh, goal writing wise than Demonic Toys. Uh, he also did Dark City, which is a great film. He wrote the script for that. That's a really good one. That's actually in my collection over there. Uh, he wrote. He did the the script for Batman Begins, which is quite a well written film. Then he did the the story ideas for the Dark Knight and the Dark Knight Rises. So obviously he was working with Christopher Nolan. So, so going from working with Full, Full Moon Entertainment and Charles Band to working with Christopher Nolan on Batman, that's crazy. Uh, he also wrote the script for Man of Steel, which I haven't seen, but I've heard decent things about. And Batman versus Superman, which I've seen. It's not good. It's not as bad as everyone has said, but it's not good. So... But my point being, David Goyer started with stuff like Demonic Toys, and he continued to do more scripts with some of these films, and he went on to do some big things and be really successful. Just goes to show, especially with acting as well, and some directing, actually, if you think of people like James Gunn, people who start off in like crappy horror and become something much bigger, uh, it's a really good starting point. So just know that if you're looking to get into any film genre, you should start in horror. That's the best way to go. So, uh, in the very beginning of this film, how it starts off, I love how you know the the two two undercover cops are talking in the car, and they obviously have a relationship going on. And the guy says, "We should get married." He's like, "We should get married to have kids," because she's like, "When are we gonna get to you know get married?" He's like, well, "We should get married if we're gonna, when we're gonna have kids." And she's like, "Okay, when do you want kids?" And he's like. I don't know, at some point, basically being like, you're stuck in this relationship the way it is for, like, the foreseeable future. I just thought that that whole exchange was actually kind of funny. But then they use one of the things that I really hate in films to kind of, like, up the stakes immediately, which is, like, 
she's like, oh my God, I'm pregnant. And it's like, oh no. So now, you know, anytime she's in danger, you're going to be like, oh, there's so much more at stake. It's not just her, it's her and the fetus. Um, but that ends up becoming even more of a plot point because it's, you know, this demon who's trying to be born. I mean, it kind of alludes to it being like, not just a demon, but being like Satan, you know, trying to be born into the world. So he's going to use her fetus to be uh, his new vessel, basically. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, the whole film, it's ridiculous. It's not a good, it's not well written or anything. But then again, like when you're watching a film like this, when you see the cover art, you know, you see this cover art, you see the name of it and you see it's from Full Moon. What are you watching it for? You're watching it because you know it's not going to be that good. You know the acting's going to be bad, which it is in this. Although for bad acting, it wasn't like crazy bad, I will be honest. And you're watching it because you want to see the demonic toys. You want to see them pull that off and have good kills. And for the most part, I think they delivered on that, to be honest. Um, the concepts for the demonic toys were really cool. That some of the kills were relatively decent. The practical effects, as far as like the kill practical effects, like the gore and everything, was not that good. They could have used a lot more fake blood. I would have liked that. Because, like, the parts where, like, the toys were, like, chewing on people's faces, like, they just, like, wiped blood on, like, fake blood on there. And there weren't, like, any chew marks or anything like that that I could see. Actually, I think the the first chewing death, um, there was a little bit of, of makeup to make it look like there were actually, like, gouges of skin taken out. But subsequent ones, not so much. It's like they were, like, spend the money up front and then let's skim towards the, <laughs> towards the end. So uh, it was kind of funny. Um, uh, yeah, rough acting, but also hokey music. Like Richard Band makes a lot of the music for Full Moon Entertainment, which is Charles Band's brother. Um, he's good at composing that type of music, but it's like hokey horror music. But it's funny because anytime I see a film that he's done music for, I can tell it's him. It just, there's just a certain sound to it, and it's kind of fun. But it's very hokey. I don't know. It's You have to put it to the right movie. So, In this, we have a horrible security guard, which I feel like in the 80s and 90s, there was this whole long-running uh, trend of having police officers and security guards in the films be total idiots. Just Well, actually, not, not just idiots, but like totally negligent. Like, didn't do their jobs, had no interest, would just sit around and like, screw off and get drunk like this security guard and just not pay attention to anything and um yeah it's kind of crazy that we went through that period where where that was such a popular thing in like 80s and 90s film it's weird but i just thought about that so the chunky chicken i thought that was a lot of fun the the main employee who ends up becoming a one of the heroes of the film um I liked his character quite a bit. I like how they set him up as like this I don't care delivery guy for Chunky Chicken. Uh, especially the fact that he's like sm smoking while he's working and then just like handling food with his bare hands while he's also been smoking. It's pretty funny. I, I like small, funny details like that put into these types of films. So I appreciate that. Um, also, the fact they call it Chunky Chicken is, is pretty hilarious. Um, and I'll... In my notes, I'll get to a quote tied to that that I really liked in this film, too. Um, nah, 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 nah. Okay, so as soon... It takes a while, but as soon as the toys, the demonic toys, come to life, you get this feeling of like, okay, here we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Now we're getting to what this film has promised. <laughs> and it's fun. Like I said, the designs on the demonic toys are pretty cool. You have... You know, the demonic clown Jack in the box, which is fun because he's kind of he can kind of get out of the box and he's like the snake type character. The sculpting of his face looks cool. He looks good and demonic and fun. Um, then the the demonic teddy bear is a lot of fun, too. Uh, he looks funny, like the part where he's got a baseball bat and he's like hiding around the corner, going to like kneecap the, uh, the security guard. He looks hilarious like that, like the way they shaped his face. It was just really funny, and just to, like, see him kind of standing up and, like, holding that bat, it, it's a funny scene. And then, I like how they threw in, like, the evolution of the demonic teddy bear, where he, um, he has that moment where he grows to, like, super size. That was a lot of fun, and I didn't see that coming. I thought they were going to keep them all small. So, it, it's, 
it's cool with crap like crappy movies like this that are like we know we're not a good film and everyone knows they're not a good film where they throw in like little surprises like that it's like we know why you're here so now the demonic teddy bear is supersized like you get excited for that stuff i do i'm just like oh sweet i wasn't expecting that there's a fun little something and then my favorite actually the um oh i forgot i literally just watched a movie so i don't know how i forgot the what is it called like the oopsie daisy doll the little like baby doll that talked like had a real attitude and a extreme potty mouth and um yeah that was pretty great i mean basically a shit talking baby doll and the voice they gave her was like super sassy and funny and the lines she had w were really funny too and that was my favorite of them because you didn't know what lines were going to come out of that doll's mouth and that was what was really fun in my opinion um do 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 yeah the jack in the box was pretty cool uh actually i already talked about a bunch of this stuff so sorry okay so here's the quote here's one of my favorite quotes from that baby doll i can walk i can talk i can even shit my pants can you shit your pants that's so funny like that's before she was i think it was the um the security guard that she was about to kill yeah like that's when they all like tag teamed it and jumped on him and started killing him so uh yeah that was pretty hilarious i loved it um man the potty mouth doll that's what i wrote down i was like this potty mouth doll is the best the best um another really great quote from this i was like oh yeah must be some sort of satanic ritual or something and i wrote down isn't it always it's usually some sort of satanic ritual with all these things like i said the actual story for this not good not good at all it plays off some really tired tropes but it's kind of what you expect from a film like this like i was saying uh the astral planes the, the whole thing where they had, like, the demon who was saying he was existing in an astral plane and then possessing these dot these toys. It is just, like, it seems like you're throwing so much together right now. It's so jumbled up that you're just kind of like, if it's not going to be a great film, then we're just going to keep piling stuff on in the script. Just, like, it's demonic toys and this, you know, demon's trying to get born and it's probably Satan. And then let's introduce these astral planes now. And it's just kind of like, oh, my gosh. Just, like, slow it down just a little bit. We don't need all this. We do not need all this. Uh, the wine-drinking demon was funny, though. Why he chose to be in child form, I don't understand. There was that whole thing where he goes through and the lady's, like, asking him about his forms. And he's like, I could look like this or I could look like this. Oh, but I prefer this. And just some little kid. And he's, like, got a glass of wine while he's talking as the kid. Which was a funny visual. But then I was just like, why would you want to stay this little kid? That's so weird. Like, why wouldn't you want to be a more able-bodied, like, grown-up? And that does happen at certain points during the film, but I feel like that should be your default, is more able-bodied, less short. Just saying. Especially if you want to get something done as a demon. That's all I'm saying. Um, when they do the backstory on the, on the demon the first time it was born, and then it was, like, kind of buried under this, this warehouse um, until blood was spilled and it finally came back to life, uh, that was hilarious because like the the demon baby being born and then the people like going and giving it away to trick or treaters was just ridiculous. But this is one of these things where like like I was talking about before, it's just like now throw this on, now throw this on. This is one of those thrown on things that I actually like because it's it's like ridiculous, but they know it's funny ridiculous, you know. So those types of things, I'm like, sweet, let's do it. Kind of reminds me of the movie. Um, demon wind if no one's seen demon wind also from the 90s kind of similar ish in ridiculousness to demonic toys uh you should definitely see that that's one of those ones it's like everything including the kitchen sink type crappy horror films check that out it's ridic but a lot of fun for that reason uh i did write down and this sucks the movie drags it really does drag the problem is they try and like stretch the the runtime on it and I'd rather it just be kind of cut down to like maybe one hour because it's about an hour and a half. I think it's like an hour and 20 some minutes, but they should have cut it down closer to an hour just to like keep it tight and more entertaining because there were legitimately times I'm just like, okay, okay, are we there yet? Are we done with this portion? Um, yeah, they just put too much dialogue and as we all know, the story's not that good. So like, why do you feel like you need to have exposition in this? 
Just saying. I uh, wrote down another quote. How do you want your death served up? Do you want it chunky style or extra crispy? I love, love, love that quote, especially because they're tying it back to the chunky chicken in the beginning. Great. I, I, I assume when they were writing it, they were like, oh, chunky chicken, that's such a funny, cool name for this chicken place. Uh, we got to incorporate that later on because it's so good. And they did. And I loved it. Um, and then I thought like when the demon was dressed up as a woman, sorry, my cat's over there being weird. When, when the demon dressed up as a woman who got naked for the guy, uh, I, it just popped into my mind. I was like, there's nothing worse than a demon trying to seduce you. And that's not just in this film. That's in any film in which a demon tries to seduce a human being. It never ends well. It's always creepy. It's always gross pretty much. So I think most of um, like phantasm, Although I know technically, like the tall man wasn't a wasn't a demon; he was more like an alien being. But it's the same type of thing. So, which by the way, I love the Phantasm films. Love them. So actually, some of these may end up showing up on the review. Let fingers crossed for that. Um, man, that guy's head was pretty loose. I wrote down the part where like the guy shoots the dude with a shotgun. I don't understand why he didn't just shoot his head and make it explode initially. He shoots him in the shoulder and then he like turns it around and just like whacks him with the stock of the of the shotgun. And like how loose his head was on was ridiculous because just like whoop and the head just rolls right off. I mean, hey, I'm all for seeing heads roll in crappy movies like this, but that was just kind of ridiculous. I felt like there should have been a little more force to it. Should have looked like there was a little more holding that head on, but you know can't can't complain too much with a movie like this um impressive was the stop motion animation on that little toy soldier that was really impressive i did not see that coming because the the other dem the demonic toys for the most part were just like hand puppets basically so i was not expecting any sort of stop motion animation and it looked good they did they pulled it off pretty well but I guess I should have known that that's something they could do because they've done that with the Puppet Master films, which I own. I don't think I own all of them, but I own almost all of those films. So those could show up in this as well. I don't know. Um, I bet people on the set had a really good time blowing up toys. That scene where they're just, they have all those toys that are possessed and they're like turning and just like shooting, shooting, shooting. It's just like this long, long sequence of toys just blowing up getting shot to crap which actually is fun it, that's a good part of the film it's it's enjoyable to watch and it just made me think the people involved with this probably had a great time shooting those things um supersized demonic teddy bear was great i already talked about that the card game the uh the the war card game between the good and the bad kid those flashbacks were awful and the fact is they start the film with that and you're just like what and it's not even interesting. Like, I understand if you start the film with something that is interesting and then tie it back in later, like, those things work. But this is just stupid, pointless, idiotic. You really could have had the good kid kind of come out of nowhere with no problem. You didn't need the, the card playing thing in the back or uh, at the beginning of it to kind of lay the groundwork for it. You don't need it. Just saying. And then, like I said, you know, to wrap it all up, not a good story, but the toys were fun. So... Uh, I am giving this a star rating out of five stars, and people may think this is really harsh because it is a relatively fun film, but then, like I said, the story's not good, it drags, and, you know. I mean, really, it's just the creatures and some of the kills, and some of the dialogue is, is like, bad fun. So, I'm giving it one and a half stars out of five. I feel like that's fair, because I, I'm not taking it from a standpoint of four crappy horror movies, it's a one point, one and a half stars. If, if we're doing that, I might have like two or something like that. I'm doing it as like film, period. It's a one and a half star. And it gets to be one and a half star because of the effects being relatively good and how it's crappy but fun. So there you go. There you have my review for, or I, my movie review let for Demonic Toys. Good times. So now let's reveal what the random selections were for the next one. And go ahead and put your comment down there and vote on which one you want to see. But first, hit that subscribe because it can help my channel out a lot. And then we'll get even more people involved voting on this. 
uh, hit the notification bell if you want to know anytime one of my uh, videos is available and do some commenting not just for the sake of voting but also just to say you know what did you think of demonic toys have you seen it give me your opinions and thumbs ups are always cool so the first random one we have is and this might be weird uh, hard to see it's a lenticular cover it is the signal i'll kind of like move it the signal see the lenticular Ooh. okay so the signal obviously another horror film i'm not going to read like the synopses on these if you really want to know you'll have to go check those out because i don't want to make this unnecessarily long but yes so the signal is the first one horror film the second one is not horror goodfellas uh this is cl a classic so it'll be interesting to see if people will break ranks with voting for horror films for a classic like this goodfellas that's a long one too uh, it's been a while since I've seen that. It's actually been a while since I've seen The Signal as well. And then the third one, for some reason, I think this is going to be the one that is most popular. Going back to horror is The Descent. This is actually a film that I saw in the theater with my wife. I actually talked my wife into seeing it. She does not like horror. And she was, like, terrified. And when we got out of this movie, she was like, you owe me. <laughs> the claustrophobia in this is awesome. But, um... Anyway, I don't want to talk too much about it because if people end up choosing this, then I will do a full review on that, more of like an analysis. So there you have it. The Signal, Goodfellas, and The Descent. Cast your votes now. And thank you, everyone, for checking this out. Until next time when we have our exciting next movie review let, keep it brutal.